Hello, this is Jafer from CompSec Direct. I want to show you how to leverage the new Kerberos exploit against Windows domain controllers called MS14-68. This vulnerability allows a user with domain credentials to forge a Kerberos ticket and receive domain admin privileges by the forged ticket. I want to thank Sylvain Monet, aka Bidor, who provided the community with an open Python exploit that allows for the vulnerability to be exploited. Although this vulnerability was patched on November 19, 2014, this exploit will work for many years to come. Let's get started. So essentially, what you first want to do is uh, connect either to a no local network or enumerate a remote network for um, port 88 and uh, 53. Essentially, what we're trying to do is we're trying to figure out what domain controllers exist on a network environment. So in this case, I was able to find 8080 open on two different IPs. So for the purpose of this exercise, uh, the domain information will be boobleware.local. My boxes are win2k3 and win2k8. So respectively, these are 10.2.1.100 and 101. In this case, I was also able to determine that these domain controllers are also running as DNS servers based on the fact that they are open on port 53. Now you want to install some Kerberos tools into Kali in order to get this working. So the krb5-user and you also might want to use the CIFS utils and if you don't have it you will need git so go on install these things if you don't already have them if you're installing the Kerberos tools for the first time, it'll come up with a GUI to help you set it up. But for the purposes of this demonstration, just OK through it, leave it in blanks. We'll go in and we'll modify the file. Um, one of the important things about Kerberos is um, clients need to be in time within uh, the server in order for the uh, uh, TGT tickets to actually work. So I'm going to use the CIFS tool net time in order to establish whether or not I am within five minutes of the domain controller. I use a uh, null session in order to accomplish this and judging from my time I am within at least four minutes so I should be good. The RFC says five minutes but in some cases I've seen instances where I've, I've been skewed for at least uh, plus or minus 30 minutes and it still may or may not work. So now you need to edit the slash etsy kerb 5com file. Um, for, in this case, I had to add the following values. I had to establish the default realm. I had to write it in all uppercase. It's very important that you do this um, when you're configuring um, Kerberos. Uh, I've set the DNS lookup realm to true and the DNS lookup KDC to true also. If you don't have these values, simply copy paste them in there. Um, for realms, it's very important that you get this section right. So the boobooware.local, all uppercase. I established the, the KDCs for both the win2k3 and the win2k8 box. And then I did a colon um, 88 for both of these. I established the admin server as the win2k3 and the default domain as the boobooware.local. Now for the, the, the main realm, I used the dot boobooware.local and I referenced that to all uppercase boobooware.local and I did the same with no dot. Um, your next step is to modify Etsy host and your resolve.conf. It's very important that you get these two things to work because essentially you do need uh, DNS to leverage um, this vulnerability. Um, I modified my Etsy host by adding the IP fully qualified domain name and the short name for the Win2K3, and I did the same thing for the Win2K8 box. I also modified my resolve.conf and added the name server 10.2.1.100 at the very top of the resolve.conf. Now, step six is very important. You need to get user creds, right? So, in my case, I already have user creds for the purpose of this demo. So, if you don't have user creds, you have to either social engineer, brute force, use passive collect, maybe even request them. So for the purpose of this exercise, we will use the user1 account. Now you want to test that 
your account actually works. So I will use knit, all uppercase username, and pass and uh, domain information. So no errors means the password worked. Wrong password, you will see that. If you if you got a blank after um, establishing the correct password, that means you've set up Kerberos um, correctly in order to authenticate into the domain. So step eight, you want to do a git clone of, of Bytor's um, git repository. So you would use the git clone and then um, that URL address to essentially clone the repository to your uh, local working file. I've already done this, so I'm going to skip that. Next, uh, it's actually very important to um, convert the username to an actual SID. So I was able to use the RPC client tool with a uh, null authentication in order to do so. And that's our SID. So we would copy this SID in relation to the user account that you're using. If you do get a problem that null sessions aren't allowed, just simply use the user creds that, that you were given. So step 10, let's go and let's forge some tickets. In this case, I'm telling it to my command was to execute Python and run the um, Python proof of concept exploit. I'm telling it the user to use, which in my case is user1 at boobooware.local. I'm specifying my SID. I'm also specifying the domain which I'm attempting to authenticate through. And there we are. So now, not only have we authenticated, but the exploit has modified our ticket and given us domain admin credentials. Now we need to move the modified creds into the default location where the Kerberos client in Linux um, operates from. So I've moved the cache credentials over. Now I'm going to connect to the domain controller into the C dollar share, just like that. So one of the things that I like to do is to download the ntds.dit file, which essentially contains all the domain information from Active Directory. Very nice thing to have. And that's essentially it. So um, again, I would like to thank Sylvain Monet for uh, providing this exploit. This is an awesome exploit. Um, it's unfortunate that you do need credentials to leverage it. It seems we're not going to get a net API for quite some time. But this is, uh, this is a close second, in my opinion. Um, if you can, uh, follow Bidor on Twitter, as well as myself, um, at JFersec. And again, thanks for watching. This has been Jafer with CompSec Direct. I hope you enjoyed.